welcome to full time banter right after the massive fixture liverpool versus man city ending in a one all draw arsenal staying at the top and uh, it's just like turning out to be a very juicy title race probably the best we've seen in like 10 years or something i'm going to go straight to abhinav i want to hear your post match thoughts quick thoughts yeah i mean like given the lineup given how he how he started the match and everything and the fact that i'm disappointed with the point and that we could have actually won it and we didn't get a penalty towards the end i think that sums it all to be honest i, I think i don't know how Klopp i love how he's it. crying I yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, i know exactly and I, and i love how i'm, how I'm crying because one minute into the podcast we started <laughs> so i know we all are just no tired. because anywhere else on the field that was a penalty and it I, i don't know how you can kung fu kick some person right in the chest in the penalty area and not get anything mm-hmm. i don't know and apart from that like seriously i think the way we played and controlled the match it's completely i don't know i just have to give it to klopp and the youngsters i think it's been brewing since the carabao cup final and the mentality shown in that in the fa cup match and even in the last nottingham forest away and then this one it, just think of it right i think kwansa and bradley were playing league one one year ago and today they're playing the biggest anfield match in a decade and they still showed up and i think that's basically a testament to what club can do and yeah i don't know i think yeah we, we got a bit lucky with the doku chance but yeah it is what it is yeah we'll uh dive right into the game before that is it quick thoughts about how this results affects your team firstly if i was <laughs> manchester city i'd be super happy like ecstatic out of even though after the lineup poor not poor but like you know not the full strength lineup weak in back line and city almost being full strength still 1-1 draw and anfield given the way they played i'd be super happy but yeah we went top we are top of the league that's what i wanted a draw uh predictions coming true and it's all in our hands now so you know one game at a time that's what the gaffer says and we're just going to stick with that not looking forward not looking way far ahead in the future porto next to overcome that hurdle then we'll go on a good juicy summer break again and then we'll be back facing city at the area and then we'll again to dubai for a, yeah. for a middle eastern refresh uh Let's going to the some... despairs of going to the despair of old trafford looking right from 7th uh, position uh bumsi <laughs> how does it feel like seeing two of your biggest rivals again head to head biggest uh, game of the season and what what do you make of it today dude i don't know how fucking liverpool didn't win this game like <laughs> honestly don't know uh i don't know how they didn't win this game see from a neutral perspective right this is a fucking awesome game to watch it goes on to show that liverpool in respect of what squad they play when they play at home it's almost impossible to beat them and today the second half to city had one chance and it was haland one on one with van dijk and that was the only clear chance that you know city created in the second half and yeah doku shot sure, hitting the post but kelleher was there yeah no it was liverpool's game to win honestly i'm surprised with how city played i thought they'd be more dominant would keep their would keep the ball and play to more of their instincts but uh, yeah i love watching this all action liverpool city yeah. game from a neutral perspective yep uh, probably the last liverpool city game in like actually like could fa cup could be the last one which i think uh, my prediction is the final going to be liverpool city but uh, premier league this is it's over the rivalry is over um let me let's go to the game straight up uh, abhinav what do you what did you think about the lineup and i know it was really weak didn't reflect in the game mm-hmm. but like uh, there were a lot of youngsters uh, not i mean makeshift everything right so right, right. how do you think how do you think uh, this lineup did amazingly well given the expectations from them and i think it's basically the way they set up right i think we, you can see the confidence between kwanza and bradley in the initial stages i think that that was something which i thought we would kind of fold in the first 5 or 10 minutes but if you look at the first 20 minutes or so city didn't have anything they were not creating anything they were not they, they're not in the in, in i mean apart from the corner and the, and the set piece they they adapted to the situation really well which i thought is kind of very you know I don't know and characteristic of a young side I mean Gomez was playing in an un- unfamiliar position Kwanza and uh, Kelleher and Bradley I think the the way they kept Ford and I think Ford was playing on the left in the beginning so the way they kept Ford in calm I think it it was amazing and it basically what they got the confidence from the midfield Endo and McAllister they were spotless and I think Van Dijk was also commanding the entire backline so they drew confidence from them so 
I don't know. I think Endo is a steel man. I mean, for 15 million, the what what he did, even the, the way he kind of he has the composure to kind of keep the ball to himself and and he can just play those risky passes. And McAllister, oh my fucking god, he is amazing. Yeah, and I think the Eng side, I didn't expect that. Uh, apart from the set piece goal, they kind of you know really really well. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, if, honestly, if I have to pick someone who shocked me the most, probably McAllister. I didn't expect that much of him. Uh, he's been like. insane for liverpool like for especially for the price that he came in how creative he is i honestly didn't think he was that creative in you know exactly the third as well no nah, um, dude yeah, i mean and there's one point i want to like in brighton and i think i finally yeah. mm-hmm. saw him play that like he was so good today probably the best mm-hmm. on the pitch exactly yeah. and that's what basically happens when he has a six kind of you know working with him because endo was not he mcallister was playing number six for the first like 10 15 matches or so mm-hmm. and then once endo kind of slowly found his game and grew, you know uh, he's kind of started putting get got his footing into the games i think that's when mcallister stepped up and he's basically playing that version of himself like he played in the world cup and in brighton uh, mm-hmm. if you see the world cup final you know his number 8 it so was good. amazing yeah. so yeah is it what do you who who shocked you the most in this liverpool team not just this game but over the past 2 3 games no i mean kudos to the midfield right like the the weakest department being the strongest one against a very strong city department uh city midfield rodri bernardo kevin kevin de bruyne i think they played really well but uh, i also feel like the way they dominated that midfield against city just says a lot about how klopp integrated those players and their skill sets within the team because for me liverpool were always once proper cdm or one caicedo away from being the favorites for the title and when they didn't get it i was happy because i was like okay now you know we are in it because they won't run away with it. so just the way they integrated endo and everybody else was a uh, really testament to what klopp skill set is but then again dude van dijk i think that backline survived because of van dijk not uh right uh because of the keeper or anything else i feel like first 5 minutes contrary to what happened of you feel i feel like city probably should have scored except mm-hmm. for the the corner which was again a premeditated routine but Uh, mm-hmm. I remember that KDB pass when he went free and then he tried to chip on the away. I think if right, he right. was a little bit uh, more clinical or like you know a little bit more of a goal scorer from close ranges, he would have just slotted in into the near post, and uh, that was like such an open space. And that was a lot of city pressure in those starting moments. So they, you guys were there for the taking, but then once mm-hmm. those pressure moments kind of relieved and you started having more of the ball, the pressing was amazing uh, right from the very top. Uh, I think that made a lot of difference, and that made all these newcomers grow into the game a little bit more. So, uh, you know, Van Dijk's leadership at the back, and you know, just being vocal makes a, made a lot of difference. Yeah, um, yeah, I actually agree with the like the first half analysis. The City were actually easily going through Liverpool's midfield, and then Klopp changed a few things at halftime. Yeah. Like he did, you know, against a lot of teams. Second half has been really strong for Liverpool. I think Liverpool scored like 10 goals after 90 minutes this season, which is insane. Yeah. Close to doing it today as well. And yeah, Nunez just like his relationship with the crossbar is just becoming <laughs> more and more insane every day. He's just like all out there, even Diaz. What do you think of Diaz, Avinavli? Did you think chances missed or he was actually good in to get into those positions? I think both, right? I mean, you would you would expect him to be in those positions, but you'd also expect him to finish one on one, right? I think, you know, the once he missed, I think he missed two chances in like two minutes or so in second half and it, when Liverpool had that period of like 15 20 minutes and Klopp tweaked the midfield and everything so and especially when Salah came in those passes Salah, and all the key should have just converted pass through through pass, the Salah pass cut yeah that was insane through the defense yeah, yeah. Pass. Mm-hmm. it was like two minutes after he came in when Salah like and anything okay so he should have converted at least one and i think you know when you have and even the goalkeeper is new i think you should just test him you should just keep it on the target at the very least right i mean at least like you know through the legs or whatever chip something he didn't he couldn't do that and i think that's basically i, I don't know i think he's been having a not so good season in front of the goal at least in the last you know couple of months or so but the good thing about him is the effort it's always there he keeps running he keeps creating those chances i think in the 80th minute or so i think he just kept dribbling past three players left and right and i think he just kind of got a corner out of it so yeah he does what he does and he was amazing in the league cup final as well as you can see i think he's been he's he's not been clinical but it's not for the lack of effort so that's there uh hopefully i think you know maybe once you know in the next three or four matches or so i think he can find find his footing uh yeah i think but like if... i i want yeah go ahead no go ahead go ahead sorry go ahead. um i just wanted to 
uh, get into the city first. The first half, how city plays and city's goal. I wanted to get mm-hmm. into the corner routine that city took. That was really interesting. Bumsi, uh, what are your thoughts about that? That was actually quite impressive. Uh, it looked like De Bruyne was going for like the proper corner routine where he was like putting the ball inside, swinging in swinger, but he went like really near. And John Stones just came in, and Liverpool was just like shook. Dude, I saw this routine against United too. It didn't come mm-hmm. off. Uh, yeah, I thought it was really interesting when they did that, uh, going near post and getting that flick on. Everybody's just standing still, like you can't do anything. There's milliseconds between the reaction and the goal, and I mm-hmm. think do it like fucking kudos to kudos to Guardiola, man. Like not really known for like set piece football. But look at him, like you know, getting like tall bodies in, like John Stones in midfield, dude. I just tactically, like he's looked so good. Like we know, like they won the treble that way. But you know, the role he's playing now, like like such a workhorse and just coming up, dude. He was world class today. The reason City got anything out of this in this game was because of John Stones, by the way, in the box. Like in the like couple of clutch defending, uh, contributing to a goal. Yeah, just world class performance. Has to start at the Euros. Yeah. Pro- probably captain material too. Yeah, I'm actually. I was really impressed by that corner routine, and the, because like Arsenal's been taking set pieces so seriously this uh, season, I feel like uh, set pieces and set piece piece coaches have been become really important in the game now. Even after the goal, I think Pep Guardiola pointed towards the bench towards the mm-hmm. uh, his set piece coach. Uh, AJ, I know like ours ours also came from City. And uh, do you think it's becoming more important set piece play? It's again, as Altera says, it's it's a part of the game. It's a big part of the game, and a lot of the uh, footballing actions are set pieces, goal kicks, throw-ins. Like in our case, uh, I've I've seen. I mean, digressing a little bit from this point, but like I've seen uh, people cribbing about Ben White or Zinchenko or whoever our wing backs are taking a lot more time on throw-ins. But if you think about it, and if you look at it repeatedly uh, in, against different teams, it's all a way of setting teams up, like baiting them into pressure. Sometimes throwing like a volley, sometimes throwing like a straight pass out of the throw-ins, and and similarly with set pieces. Like today, as good as De Bruyne's ball and and instincts were, I think it was all Ake who made the goal. Like he literally blocked mm-hmm. like the runner who would have blocked the front post, and then Stones just made the run and scored the goal. So it's it's becoming a big part, and I think uh, Guardiola. As with any, most of the things in today's world, started it at City. With I mean, not started it, but like at least made it famous by being the first big team to do it. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, we are just reaping the benefits from it. So a big part, yeah, <laughs> big part of like everything that goes attributed to Arsenal. Big big credit goes to Guardiola. I think this is this is to his credit too. Nero, you know, if Thomas Frank is watching this, right, he's clipping <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> I think United need to in yours need to go and get another staff member now. Do Thomas Frank is <laughs> like a staff yeah, hiring uh, staff spree, hiring spree. Just go to all small yeah. teams, Burnley and Brentford, and just get all <laughs> those boys in everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah uh, so taking us to the Liverpool goal now. Uh, just describe it, Abhinav. Enough. What did you think about the goal? I mean, it's it's, it's as clear a penalty as you can see. I think it's it's just a you know we put the pressure on. I think who was the moment the back was Ake, right? It was Ake. Yeah, Ake yeah. basically Ake, Ake gave a pretty mm-hmm. bad pass to Edison. And bad pass, yeah. I think it's testament to Nunez and just uh, the performance-enhancing right, right, yeah. drugs that he's taking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's in uh, his topi. I think that that's that's basically what keeps Nunez in the team, right? I mean, like he can be offside like twenty times in a game, but he can be can miss those chances. He can keep hitting the woodwork, but he can you can never question him for the lack of effort or anything. He just keeps running. He makes those chances. He he is in those positions. Right, so I think that's basically what Nunes does, and then yeah, I mean, it's it's as a clear penalty. I think no one can dispute the penalty, right? I think it's clear, and it can it came from AK. Okay. Um, yeah, I think and McAllister, I thought he was going to kind of go to the right, but I think he, he did he did good. I think he took the last penalty as well in one of the I don't know uh, Europa League matches, I guess. So yeah, yeah, that was a nice pretty game. good pen. Like a big yeah. dude, Edison oh. was this close to saving it. I, I was, he, I, he's always this close to saving, but he never <laughs> saves it. Dude, yeah, really he's only thing. saved three three penalties so far in City. Yeah. No, I think that's a big thing to uh, like if you compare two situations, right? From this game versus mm-hmm. City versus United, where Edison came and cleared against Garnacho, like similar situation, but the difference was Darwin is like a team's player. Like he will go out, he won't be scared to get hurt. Versus United, 
I mean, I'm, I won't question Garnacho, but like United are in a place where nobody is really going for the team. It's mostly like personal glory that people want. People are like players are generally going for just because of season being just a write off, right? So I think Nunes always. No, puts I mean this, it's not a write off. Uh, there's. I mean, still have, it is. If you have that manager, it's as good as a write off from the. We'll talk about that right. later. Vamsi has yeah, something but, to tell you. No, no, no keep later. him in. I'm totally Ten Hag in, dude. Like totally on that yeah. boat. Please, <laughs> let's never get rid of him. But, but yeah, coming back to Nunes, right? I think that's his positive side, which is like he's a big time team player. But I feel like mm-hmm. also with players like Diaz, Luis Diaz, and Darwin Nunes, it's very difficult to win the league because they're never bad. Like Gabriel Jesus is never bad. but he provides something very different to the team but then they won't finish the games off like i imagine mane being in instead of luis luis diaz and you winning like 4 5-0 so that's the difference between these two players and that's that's what makes me feel like gives me hope that okay liverpool might not you know might just give it away going down the line no exactly i'm just to add to your point i think that's based i mean look at the margin of difference we don't know knife search man like everything yeah. counts every goal everything counts i think that's where i think we can fall short a bit with diaz misses or even with even with nuno is kind of hitting the woodwork all the time and the biggest miss was jota man i think jota even if he doesn't have yeah. that 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 energy of nuno is or diaz or dribbling or what if he he has a shitty game for like night 85 minutes and he scores two goals towards the end i had i have no fucking clue how he does that yeah. like, we know it's it, what bro. jota Trust does me, we know we know that <laughs> we're well aware of jota so oh yeah arsenal yeah jump so no yeah. i think that that's basically what what uh, jota jota's going to come back i think maybe in mid of april if we are lucky so i think hopefully by that time we're still in within that one or two points of difference and i think maybe he can pull us over the line but who knows you got sala back yeah. i think you have you have, you have him covered now yeah no, we're not no, yeah. No. yeah but so. you know we want to talk tactically a little bit on uh, how liverpool set up for this game i thought it was like they set up in like a really like high mid block and like really high high block and i was just noticing yeah. the i was just looking at some stats okay to see like whether it was effective or not and apparently mm-hmm. Haaland had 28 touches the whole game and Mo yeah. Salah after coming on at 65 had way more touches than it just ridiculous on how good that mid block is i think like, just because of how the on? just because of how mm-hmm. the team was it it had to be done that liverpool play aggressively and high press uh, like all throughout the game just not give city an inch First up I think it was easy for City to like, keep possession keep more control of the game but I think just like everyone just upped their uh, spirits and up the Anfield just erupted like after half time so yeah you're right like the uh, mid block was, mid block was really important just so that City don't settle into the game and you could see like from all the mistakes that City were making and it was it, this is the game plan and I think Liverpool kids or whatever uh executed it to perfection i was really impressed by how high intensity corner bradley is i know yeah. i've heard really good things about him but uh, i hadn't really seen as many matches to see that but today seeing him properly like he's again he's just like robertson i think he's like a ditto robertson copy but on the on the right Dude, he not much me like of ben williams exact like nico williams <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> sort of, sort of like that, like on how he yeah. plays. But yeah, so th- exactly, that's that's again testament to the performance and answering drugs which the Klopp has gotten so much out of pharma, big pharmaceutical companies, and uh, say no to pharma, big pharma. <laughs> <laughs> I almost spit my coffee, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm 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 dying on that hill. I'm dying but on that hill, dude. This is what Pep is just does, huh? Do no it. tactics. This is, he just smuggles pharma drugs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Klopp is the Klopp is a pharma Klopp, smuggler. Dude, Linders, Linders is the tactician of sorts. Klopp secretly goes to Mexico and comes back, bro. And I think he got into trouble last season. That's why he's leaving. He's done. I think the cartel has told him, bro. Okay, enough, enough football now. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, seriously, dude. Like, uh, just like I was shocked by how timid City were in the second half. It could be Anfield, but I don't know. Like. uh i mean we played at anfield it wasn't as crazy scary and i've seen games where anfield has has been crazy for 20 minutes but then the rest of the 70 minutes have just been like normal if you control mm-hmm. the game well but today they were completely on it and they still haven't lost the game that this whole year don't yeah. this is the first game i've seen where rodri was ineffective in a city team and i was about to was say that yeah same mm-hmm. dude dude He has finished Rodri like two, three times in the game, which was ridiculous mm. given the game he had. And dude, Rodri was just nullified. And I don't know how good a mid block should be with Endo, McAllister, and Harvey Elliott mm. in there. 
Oh Dali please, fire. I I've been repping this boy since day one, and I think he's a <laughs> what he's basically a Odi Khan dude. Like, but like in in spirits, like someone with more energy. I don't know. He has his problems too, but Javi Elliott is just top baller. For me, he was the standout player. Like the last four or five games, I think without mm-hmm. with Salah out, the way he stepped in mm-hmm. and like the intensity with that. They need a left footy in there, and like Harvey Elliott is doing so well. And you know, some going back to set pieces, right? I was seeing a little bit about like how Liverpool attack, and like you know, when they burst out, right? All those mm-hmm. long diagonal balls. That's what you play in set pieces, also, right? Like crosses mm-hmm. to the to the side, and then another cross in. Mm-hmm. And that's they just create these like set piece sort of actions over and mm-hmm. over, really high up the pitch. and you have to be so concentrated to defend them so that it's is all... that is when they are able to actually pin the defense back and yeah. when the other team is attacking their counter pressing is like one of the best in the world so it's a good game plan right you're either counter pressing or you're creating the set piece opportunities on the left and you have trent you have robertson these kind of like ballers to put it in and now you have like these crazy nunias and all these people on drugs just like in the box just <laughs> doing anything you want uh no Yeah, I yeah, saw that it, McAllister's ball to Sober's lie. By the way, I don't know how he fucking didn't score that <laughs> shit. Like no pressure on it. Again, sort of like set piece. Mm-hmm. First half, yeah. it was not on target. Maybe even he wasn't expecting the ball. But again, like beautiful yeah. piece of play. Like exactly. I think uh, McAllister's composure is second to none. Man, I think I don't know how he's so calm and so cool. Even the last match, right? I think this wrong for just floated a ball to Nunes. I mean, I think you just kind of people kind of scramble and then do some crazy shit. But he, his composure on the ball, his kind of his confidence on the ball, the way he grew into the games in the last couple of and especially this one. Even I think I was sorry, seeing it, he was playing his one one twos with Endo right before Rodri. Rodri couldn't do anything. I'm like, what the hell, man? And and I think and Haaland, the only chance I saw. Of Haaland was that one-on-one with Van Dijk, and obviously yeah. Van Dijk snuffed yeah. it out. But yeah. apart from that, Haaland was like invisible. I mean, yeah, maybe twenty odd touches or something. That's it. Rodri was ineffective. Kevin De Bruyne, he was subbed off for whatever reason. I mean, like I thought he was okay playing. Okay, he was subbed off. He was not so so happy about it. And yeah, and I think it's it's just the that low block midfield that we have, and I think it's it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, and, and you guys say Klopp is not a tactician, so yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Who says that? Who says that? No, he no, he's, no. he's he's hey, more of a band manager. Pep, <laughs> Pep 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 is the real guy. Well, I think City, City. Obviously, all credits to Liverpool. But talking about City, I just feel like City is not the team that it was. In my head, a lot of it comes down from the fact that they have game, they have Haaland, right? And they, again, I don't get, I don't buy into the narrative that he does did not have any X number of touches or Y number of touches because he doesn't need it. He's just not that player. He's not a theory on who will get involved in the team and then. uh you know have a sense and stuff like that or maybe a cane he's just not that so that narrative doesn't uh, suit well with me but the fact is that this guy needs support right and there's no it, there's an extreme lack of connection between city's uh defensive and midfield unit versus their attacking unit so they attack with four and then if rodri can mm-hmm. come up and if they're not if they're working against a low block then obviously it's a cohesive unit but if it's not then it they become really stretched and there's no cohesion that's what happened at Emirates when they faced us where they had a few good chances really good chances in the first 5 minutes but then once we started separating their midfield from their attack they really couldn't do anything like Haaland was getting bodied by Saliba and all of those things were happening right so i think they really miss someone like Gundogan or or somebody who can uh, connect the two uh, departments together because all these players like you know Kovacic and like Nunez or like Matias Nunez and and all of them are just not it They're not like city level players. Mm-hmm. They're probably stop gaps for me, like Calvin Phillips is of the world. AJ, I agree with like fifty percent of what you said, right? Like, I I still believe in that Haaland taking touches narrative, but that part about like the midfield getting disconnected, and I think Pep saw this today. He got in Kovacic today to sort of yeah. bridge that gap, and City looked so much better, right? They created that yeah. Doku chance. They were much more in the box, and you know. that happened but i feel like harlands at his best right is like how nunez at his best like you know he needs to be when a team plays a really high line you want him marauding at with that speed and physicality and running cuz he like takes such long strides it's impossible to catch him up pull him back so i yeah, think that's he does his strength, need to, right pace yeah he yeah. does need behind. to take those touches and he does need space to run right and mm-hmm. liverpool yeah. and arsenal and play that kind of game wrong. He's not as strong as like people think he is. He looks like a huge person, guy. But I think Van Dijk, mm-hmm. Saliba, both have handled him pretty, pretty easily. Like pushed him, 
you know uh, no, but created like, like what, a situation what do you mean by like him needing touches like he's a running behind kind of a striker he's a finisher he's mm-hmm. you make you play yeah. around him you serve him so, the ball and he will finish from wherever you want but that's that's that how he would run behind and and finish it like he's not he'll never I, get involved in plays i mean to say that when teams like city or arsenal play like a really high line right they leave gap behind where you can't finish with one touch it's impossible you have to cover that ground either you get it through a long pass or you take it and run right if he's not mm-hmm. getting the pass then he has to take and run and that requires touches clearly you know the mid block is doing its job where you know the pass is not coming to him so yeah, he has to start on the wing and sort of like you know use that pace to cut a shot that you know well break the fucking but does he ever do that shit. he does do it he does do that he used to do that i mean lower level teams much more easier to do that but again when you're playing against like top like to this guy still a kid we need to remember that playing against yeah, top he's, he's quality like 22 defender. 23 fuck man like oh, yeah, come on dude is it <laughs> madre take dude, him that... away like leave him bape to be as you know dude this is his second season in the premier league bro and he I scored know. 80 odd goals like at city and you know like we need to remember <laughs> this and 30 30 plus year old van dyke you know maybe saliba is more closer to his age bracket bodying him but uh, that's me again saliba had more time to settle in the premier league he reads the game better and you know maybe they are missing a player like gundogan who can like dictate play and i was just surprised to see rodri today like that i have never seen rodri play I like know. that yeah. i just and that so game plan bro like think about it right endo mcallister and harvey let have no physicality against like rodri john stones and like de bruyne just like and still like, they didn't need class. it harvey elbert played midfield only in the second in the first half it was all sobers like yeah yeah, yeah. sobers like yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean he was playing behind the striker he drifted like, inside in the second half anyway, yeah yeah kind of i'm changing my opinion on alvarez too now i mean either he's <laughs> because of him playing out of position or i don't know i mean i don't think he's he's i'm okay i'm not going to say he's a bad player because obviously he's not but i don't think he's having a great season and doku is is i don't know i, I still have all my judgments mm-hmm. out there i mean i don't think of him as a great player yet yeah still young yeah. might become right, one guys. but i don't know nero i want to ask you a question uh, okay do you uh, think it's sort of moving cre- past uh, one last one uh, liverpool last Yeah, go ahead. We ha- it sort of sounds crazy. It sort of feels like Liverpool lost this game, but they haven't, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. If do you okay? Do you what do you what did you see from City today that you think could carry to like a title race? City are at how many? Sixty, sixty three, sixty two, sixty three. Yeah. And Arsenal Liverpool are at sixty four, sixty four, right? Yeah. Uh, what I think doesn't matter because City can string up ten. games winning streak and just like end the title race right there i think we both know that the trauma is already there and uh i am not going to say anything no answer <laughs> like when it comes <laughs> no, to man no, city I... no zero analysis here nothing nothing to say if city can get past march with the, hmm. maybe within like one or two points of arsenal liverpool hmm. i think they can walk it man i think everything else they like walk arsenal, it Liverpool's the thing is yeah even if they if they beat beat arsenal then it's just about liverpool slipping up right uh, cuz oh. i don't think they city have any other hard hard fixture exactly yeah. if they beat arsenal because liverpool still have to play it man united away everton away villa away and spurs yeah. at home those are yeah. like tough as pick fixtures man you can't like i mean we are, we are going to be not going to win all three games man united villa and everton away everton even though they're shit right now it's liverpool so they'll mm-hmm. show up whatever I mean, so i think not get us still to, city right? still look anybody that goes and plays a game against city city go in as favorites right whoever it I is i think right? ask, mm-hmm. i exactly. think yeah i think if you have to look at liverpool's fixtures and like who could actually uh, cause problems for liverpool i see aston villa as a team that could i think arsenal and city mm. go past aston at that time for i'm also hopeful but i've never like liverpool everton has never done justice to that derby ever like i always <laughs> go in hopeful thinking that oh it's everton away maybe like players would be on it but maybe shawn dice changes something uh, you know what everton can do If if Liverpool and Arsenal are on the same points on the final day, Everton will lose to you. Or Dude, to, don't to say it loudly. The They'll get six more <laughs> points deducted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and then they have Old Trafford within twice within the span of twenty days. Mm-hmm. Again, zero trust from Man United. Like we've seen that against City, we were very hopeful against City for forty five minutes, but then that just like went to shits. So. 
I mean, I don't know. Dude, we like, played uh, Mexos as striker, bro. Come on, like what the fuck, like. <laughs> <laughs> Come Doesn't on, matter. you can't. Yeah, you can't win shit Bro, playing you, him as Dude, you've had a twenty-eight game sample set, so please let's not talk about United. <laughs> Dude, honestly, <laughs> Liverpool walk it, bro. I honestly, Liverpool just walk it if they beat, uh, if they beat United. And I mean, it all depends on Arsenal versus City. That will be a game that mm-hmm. you will hate watch. I've been up very happily. Yep. Uh, uh, yep. So it all depends on that. If Arsenal beat City, then it's trouble for you. If City beat Arsenal. Then I think Liverpool walk it. If it's a draw, also it's a perfect result for you guys because I don't see. I think you beat Everton. I think you beat Brighton. I think you beat Sheffield. I think you beat United at Old Trafford too. I think you beat Crystal you beat Palace, F- Fulham, Fulham, West Ham, West Ham away, Tottenham at home, West. Villa away, Tot- Villa away, I'm Villa away, home, Villa away, man, Villa away. I think that's this, going to be that banana no, skin. No, but today but... changed. Okay, let's today move changed. on. Yeah, like, today. Like, it, all all of this chatter is just making me feel so sad about myself because I can't even justify in my head that we're going to win. So no, I, this, let's just move this on. segment ah, actually yeah, we have flowed into this. Actually, yeah. Bumsy made us flow into this segment properly because we are going to talk. We were going to talk about the title race for the next ten minutes and like include Arsenal now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, uh, last minute mm-hmm. winner from Kai Havertz keeping Arsenal top of the table. Where are the haters? Uh, any one of you haters yet? Uh. Word, word <laughs> haters. Okay, be <laughs> honest. Be honest. Just be completely honest. I know Bumsy because he's bro. been retired. Haters. Yeah, he's been there. <laughs> uh, we have like uh, written receipts of Bumsy. I've been a Came in late, so what were your thoughts on Kai Havertz scoring a mm-hmm. winner? He shouldn't have been on no, the no, pitch, no, no. but Kai apart Havertz from that, yeah. shouldn't oh. it be on Kai Havertz before? <laughs> Shut, up. Shut the yeah. fuck up! Okay. <laughs> no, on before because I never had anything on Kai Havertz. I'm like I thought it was something which Chelsea was kind of getting, you know, getting a good deal. And mm-hmm. initially, I didn't know how yeah uh, it was gonna was gonna be Havertz to be honest. And I think initially, you know, those claims were true. I thought it was going to go bad, and mm-hmm. it's bad piece of business. But I mean, again, I, I don't follow us in so tactically. So, but it, mm-hmm. the thing has been coming up with all these clutch goals, right? And I think mm-hmm. he's playing an all nine role very well. So good for him. Yeah. And what? What? Please uh, tell us about how you thought that was a penalty. And AJ, please it's retaliate. Fun. I'm. I'm yeah, by, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Uh, like. Havertz. Havertz, wait. Uh, that, that was a penalty. Uh, not a penalty. Right? I'm so sorry. Red card. Red card. Red card. Yeah, it's a second yellow. Dive. He, he dived a second yellow. And then, yeah, he should have been sent off. But right? wasn't there like no, it wasn't there a hip touch? I mean, I think that's enough for him to go around. It wasn't like a, a Van Bissouma dive where he was like, mm-hmm. oh, I, I basically ran into some air. So I felt some pressure and I went down. It wasn't that. He basically had a hip touch. And he went down. Mm-hmm. It was a soft one. It wasn't a penalty. Never saying it was a penalty, but it was also not a dive. But also the fact that the ball was in play for forty-nine out of hundred minutes, and there was a not mm-hmm. even a single yellow card, which could have been like double, triple yellow cards for all of these Brentford players. So, please, Thomas Frank is the last person I'm going to take that excuse from after that game. Like you got bat- battered. You could see it at the full-time handshake where Artera literally, firstly, he was like you know really arrogant about it. Like I love that part where. <laughs> He did something like he did a pout and he went went to his team, hugged them, and then he went to Thomas Frank and he literally didn't even look him in his eyes. Both of them just like mm-hmm. literally touched their hands and went away in disgust. So you could feel you know one upping Thomas Frank and I love Thomas Frank. Don't get me wrong, but uh, it was yeah fuck off. Like you can you can use all your dark arts, but when we use it, then it's a penalty or it's a red card. You can go fuck yourself. Don't care about it. Not to you, but to Brentford. It's it's to Brentford. No, I know, I, I know what you're saying, but <laughs> it's still it's still a dive, though. I think I got the same thing from Jota, man. I think it was a dive. I mean, come on. I don't think it is a dive. I think he, I mean, yeah, I you have the was... faintest of your hip touches. Yes, I get so, that. And I that's mean, enough for there. you to go down. That's enough for you to go down. I mean, we but all that call... wasn't enough for Jota to go down. But yeah, but no, 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 okay, but like, okay, we go all ahead. we all you remember mm-hmm. we all called uh, Rashford's foul to be a foul because uh, there's enough pressure for him to go down, but it wasn't given, right? And there was an uproar. I don't think I I didn't see it that way. That it was enough pressure. I felt that these incidents happen. And if that happened, there are there were like four incident, three incidents actually that I can remember from set pieces where we were held back. Like one was with Trossard, one was with Gabriel. Uh, none yeah, of them the were Trossard given a one was a penalty. I I, yeah. I agree so, with you there. So I think I I just feel like it was uh, yeah that was a, just a stick to beat us with just because we won uh, doesn't have any ground. So we can quickly move on. Yeah, it was a yeah. subjective decision, not like a objectively should have been given. Of course, like the second yeah. yellow. Mm-hmm. But uh, like categorically, I can say on the pod that like Kai Havertz has turned out to be above, uh, like at least 
for now a success for 60 million of the like, season straight up like no no no, no. relax <laughs> calm down he still has so few reasons for that being being very being very unbiased few reasons for that he's already equaled his tally at chelsea for like goals and assists uh his best season secondly like he's plugged in wherever possible he's played a lot of different positions uh for arsenal and now we're truly realizing that he's not the jaka replacement but he's just like a he's just a, like a like an extra like tool that arteta can use a quality tool jaka's replacement has actually declan rice who i think is the signing of the season i i know van dijk is there this is going to be a very tough fight i feel like whoever's going to win the title is going to take that prize as well mm-hmm. but declan rice bumsy has been you know how much i like simped for this guy like dude i'm watching him arteta play has, yeah mm. arteta has taken him above like a level he's put him at 8 he's put jorginho behind to like you know cover up for declan rice and he's just turning out to be like an amazing uh you know header of the ball his shot he hit the post what kind of a shot was that um so he's tra- he's kind of being the be- like the perfect uh sort of like box to box midfielder for us what are yeah, your I mean, thoughts on him no dude i mean i think that's the best 100 million arteta has ever spent like you know other arteta teams has only have- spent 100 million Yeah. Yeah. You mean like sure. best 100 million spent best 100 in general? Million, yeah, best amount apart of from Bellingham. Apart from yeah. Bellingham. Yeah, probably. I mean in EPL. Yeah, like 100 million spent was, you know, an mm. award a manager spent in the recent years. Mm. I think Decky is like what, mm. what a fucking player. Mm. Like, what a player. And you know, I I was I was sort of curious because I I didn't think he would like fit in that well tactically, but how Arteta uses Declan to squeeze that midfield, bro. I think he. How did you not think he would like? I mean, uh, he was I mean, like the. I mean, he would fit in piece. well. It would take time, yeah. right? Like tactically for yeah, Arteta yeah. to yeah. figure out what the system is going to be because pa- he mm. couldn't use Party to it squeeze did. the midfield. Yeah, midfield that I well. I think it took a little bit of time. Yes, it took a little bit of time, mm. and just like mm. Declan's quality to like prevent XG and to keep your centre back so high mm. and like not giving them mm. chances and. pushing your whole like the mm-hmm. other teams attack only to the wing right only because mm-hmm. just cuz ben white and sejak gar up mm-hmm. right and it's just like he makes that possible and declan rice pops up in those wing back pockets right like when mm-hmm. the wing backs are like going forward he goes and covers that area mm-hmm. and you're, oh my god like just tactically so good on the other hand see guys said oh this other pl- other players that you know teams have spent this money on who's shown a lot of promise like i really like watching kaisedo at brighton probably a little bit more than watching declan rice at west ham west ham just a boring mm. team to watch but also like know. west ham mm. uh, perhaps like were the, the declan rice was like 6 8 everything there like he had yeah. to stay back yeah. uh, moe is is like a defensive manager he was making sure that he uses his defensive attribute arteta is doing exactly the opposite he's using offensive attributes of declan rice which we're just seeing now and it's 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 really good uh, and with with easy i want to talk a little bit about our new found you know benny like, boy is it yeah <laughs> no, like i was i was going to say benny boy i love him anyway sorry go ahead i, I mean about? i want to talk about ben too but i want to talk about jorginho um, oh, yeah. and like what kind of a buy that has been initially like came with a little bit of criticism but he's been so good at six like yeah thoughts on him he's- I think he is I mean he's proving doubt is wrong in terms of like him being third in the Ballon d'Or and I was trust me I was I loved it off like he was the third placed third best player in the world that season I was like this is hilarious but but like he's proving his worth he's probably the second best or the or at least right now I'd put him above Kai Havertz the best piece of business that we've had from Chelsea after mm. all the cons or or con artists we've had from them double agents with william check and i don't know who else like uh, was the william gallus all of these idiots who came and played for arsenal after chelsea i think uh, mm-hmm. these two have really uh, you know enhanced my faith in arteta more than any, anybody else right mm-hmm. like just imagine how big it is for a new manager to get in these players who are highly criticized in terms of their fees or just their age profile or savior complex how, yeah where they are coming from i just hope from. it ends now i hope it yeah. ends now you know it, it has we to can't end. I mean, like save everyone yeah, yeah it has to end and like <laughs> imagine, imagine he's what, like okay balatelli come back bro i yeah. believe in you <laughs> <laughs> no 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 it, enough yeah yeah it is it is such a big thing like it it makes arsenal as such a great proposition for any player out there when like okay yeah if 
if you are a good player and if Arteta thinks you are a good player then he will get the best out of you so if Arteta comes calling you would definitely take that call mm-hmm. it's not like you know you'd be like yeah why would I want to go there so things like that I feel like yeah he's done a great job with the team and Jorginho has been a big part like, ever since he's come on I think he's played 5 out of the 8 games that we are uh, we've won out of like yeah. the last few ones and yeah. he's been instrumental against especially the big teams but now also uh, the supposed minions mm-hmm. that you know that we should be beating and we are beating them so yeah I yeah. just feel like the, like his he's he's unlocking all of the players he's unlocking yeah. Odegaard he's unlocking I think Odegaard gets more unlocked with Parthi but like he's unlocking Declan Rice to another level I don't think Parthi yeah. and Declan mm-hmm. Rice would be as good as Georgie and Declan Rice but yeah moving on to the to the next part I no, wanted I to do I just want to mention yeah. two players firstly Benjamin yeah. White I mean yeah I forgot if, yeah. Get, get, if, get yourself yeah, yeah. if do Gareth it. Southgate doesn't take Benjamin White no matter what their issues were no matter I don't know what happened Maybe he stole something. He has whatever he has on him. Just <laughs> forget about it. And we have to have we have to take Benjamin White to the Euros. I mean, not saying he'll play above uh, Kyle Walker, but he has to be there. He gives certain things, especially because Saka is going to play right wing, and their dynamic mm. is like they have a set dynamic. So it will be foolish not to use it if it. Comes I don't think to he wants right. to play though. I don't think Ben White is interested in playing international tournaments. I think it's because and of. I know why you're there. saying that. Okay, I've seen that. Fucking I think video. he wants. <laughs> I think he wants to reduce uh, football in his life. He's like, this is enough. This is taxing enough. I don't think he cares. He also like came came back from the Euros yeah. uh, because of some supposed fight which happened. But no one knows what happened. Yeah. Um, but like he yeah, was, was never second player. Again, so there has to be some sort of like <clears throat> some sort of quarrel disagreement with South- Southgate. But yeah, yeah that's... basically summary summary of Ben White is uh, extremely good player can play inverted can overlap underlap always available never injured. Yeah. Just the right attitude, so just super happy with them. Fifty million well spent. Very um, well spent. And you, you know, this goes to show that we are actually really happy as Arsenal fans, really happy with Arteta's talent ID. I've just seen this from Liverpool fans being happy with Klopp, whoever he buys, and they're just like, you know, he's going to be good. We have full trust in him. Yeah. Pep Guardiola, whoever he buys, although Pep has had a lot of stinkers too, but whoever he buys, we're happy with him. Uh, same thing with Arsenal. That's why I truly believe that Caicedo and and Mudrik are just suffering because of Chelsea, and yeah. they actually are decent players because we were going to get them. In, yeah. in another world, we have Caicedo and Mudrik instead of I don't know instead of who instead of definitely yeah. Trossard and Jorginho. Jorginho, I was uh, going to say we definitely was yeah. going to yeah. get Trossard. Yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> probably wouldn't have Kai Havertz then because he was. I mean, yeah. we could wouldn't spend three hundred million. We probably yeah, would reduce yeah. somewhere. Um, and the last one is. Uh, my favorite player. I know he's played his last game. I know he's not going to be showing his face ever again in an Arsenal shirt. And nor do I want to want him to after mm-hmm. yesterday. But uh, Ramsdale, I just, I'm just so happy for this dude because I've been. I mean, I'm a big fan, and uh, it, it, I've, I've also learned that why he's not playing. And it makes sense, not just because of last game, but like because of what Raya has brought to the table. But I just didn't want it to end, uh, end it like how it would have if he hadn't scored that winner for him. Like it would be just a. Disaster and heartbreaking, uh, you know, feeling. And uh, after the game, Arteta went and bear hugged him. And so it was like a perfect parting moment, right? You know, okay, you made a, a cold mess. hug though. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was a cold hug, bro. Not yeah. even that. <laughs> it wasn't a cold hug. He, he was like, it, I think it, it satisfied my yeah. soul. So it was fine. But I like how it, how the game. Sure, the game. We won the game for sure yeah. to save his blushes. But I'm happy this game happened so that Arsenal fans can't won't like cry anymore about Raya. They know what they're getting with Raya. Yeah. And they know what they. I'm not gonna miss about Ramsdale about his bummer. I moments. think we learned. I think we learned it even before the game. This game cemented it. Like there was no, not much of a debate of Ramsdale coming back. Mm. Uh, I what think was in, it? In the past two months. Sorry. Yeah, what, what was is, it, bro, what he was has. Play? Yeah, he. Ha- oh, reason to play Ramsdale in this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Raya is from like we bought him from Benford, but we haven't yet bought oh, him okay. yet. We have loaned him. Okay. Uh, same oh, thing happened like, when you played. Uh, no, we we have loaned him with an option to buy, which is like exercised, I think, already. So like oh, forty okay, million to buy him. Um, yeah, Ramsdale okay. played against Brentford at the Emirates too. This one was yeah. at the Emirates, sorry, uh, uh, at uh, mm-hmm. at Brentford Stadium, and he had a howler there as well. So yeah. wow, he wasn't punished even for in it. The FA he, Cup, had, he had one. Yeah, yeah even if, even in the FA Cup when we lost to West Ham three 0 he was there. 
so like he's he hasn't had a good season at all whenever he's come on you don't need him but I, yeah we move I'm on i'm surprised joet given rai is so good at high claims that you know in the one game mm-hmm. that you need some keeper to come get those high claims uh, you know arteta mm-hmm. starts playing ramsdale in that and you know i don't know why like it just just weird i don't understand the tactic maybe you guys know better hike what do you so, mean so like in the corners like, uh, coming and catching the high claim so yeah. that the defense raya, is not moved yeah raya is yeah so you're saying he should get ramsdale no, for I that no i mean I, where that because in teams against like west ham brentford these corner these yeah. corner targeting teams right that's why you need raya mm-hmm. to come catch those like you know before i mean dude it honestly it was the fa cup so we needed to play ramsdale somewhere and you know to keep him happy keep the team a little bit more happy and the other two games were like loan i don't think arteta would have played him if uh, it was in yeah. brentford and he wasn't like supposed to play him or whatever he wasn't forced to play him and a third keeper is kind sketch up who is <laughs> like just yeah. not ready for any football yet some dude called karl heinz he's not ready yet so i mean obviously we'd play ramsdale yeah. all right like we uh, did the the segment we extended the segment but uh, going quickly to the top 4 race the two main results which happened is united winning 2-0 against remind me again everton Everton. Everton. Everton at home and Aston Villa and Tottenham Tottenham beating Aston Villa 4-0 which is like the shock result Dude, there was a red uh, card for Villa also the... in that game hmm. I think I finished the yeah, game yeah. forgot who got it Ma- Captain McGinn forgot who got that yeah Captain McGinn no, do you McGinn. guys think it was a red or it should have been a yellow I think it was a stonewall red like I feel like he just took him out it was worse than Matty Cash it was a, it's yeah. a red simple red No, no, I agree. I agree. It's it's more about in the, the intent the, than the than yeah. the impact. Yeah, he was nowhere yeah. near the ball, right? I think John McGinn yeah. was nowhere. It's just the intent. Like it was his intention intent, yeah. was to hurt him. Yeah. So you can be yeah. as subjective as possible, but this, like, yeah. according to the rules, it is what it is, right? You know what? What? But for the highlight game, in that what, game, Van hmm. Deven came off injured, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I was like, hmm. Dragosin came on. Right, right. That was interesting. First time yeah. seeing him play, but big miss, bro, for uh, Tottenham losing Van der Ven again. I don't know four times. Van der Ven can't stay uh, injury free to save his life, bro. <laughs> like again, I feel like this is something to do with Ange ball, mm. like just like Klopp ball. It's just like the intensity and. uh you know su- such a high line that he has to go back run back and actually make those tackles and that's how like the injury is happen injuries are happening but that's going to be a big miss but at, at least they bought dragosin which is good for them but mm-hmm. my star of the game is i was, yeah. oh that guy God, yeah. agree that guy is firstly strong he's so strong and his decision making is top class everything he does is like top class as far as if like hit a jackpot in him for like so yeah. low I think I think the first goal came from his press, right? And he he won the ball and he yeah. just passed it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He just like pushed him, dude. Like it just like pushed it was him, and then yeah, easy. he just got the ball and it was done. No, Patricio um, signed him at Juventus, it's... and he signed him back at here. Hmm. Like just followed him. Hmm. I mean, goes to the quality. Is, is that guy still in jail? Or <laughs> no, bro. Is yeah. he still in jail? He's operating from jail. <laughs> he is still in jail. <laughs> He's still in jail, right? Yeah. Jail. How yeah. Italian of him. Like no, no. Uh AJ, what do you what are your thoughts on uh the all fam- all familiar Una Emery collapse? It was a really good <laughs> evening, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was, to be honest, as I I have a soft spot for Aston Villa and Unai Emery. I felt like I mean I always have felt like he was dealt with a very bad hand at Emirates post Fergus uh, post sorry post Wenger. But then there was a typical Unai Emery performance. He changed his tactics for some reason. He played five, I mean three at the back with two wing backs. Mm-hmm. Not much of a midfield. I think he played Yuri Tielemans who, who he hasn't been playing for a long time. And then. Hmm. Uh, they lacked a lot of control in the game, which they generally are good at from the midfield. And playing the high line was always going to be one of the challenges against Tottenham. I feel like more than anything else, because Tottenham themselves play a high line, so they do it every day in the training, right? So it is easier for them to understand and break those high lines because that's literally hmm. what they face every day in, in the training, and they made the most of it. Same can be said for Aston Villa too. But I think Aston Villa's midfield was really run over by by Tottenham's and. Again, Kulusevski, you uh, like he passes the ball, he tracks back, he defends. But the biggest, I think, aspect of him is like you can't really get the ball off him. So you can tackle to him. Like it, ball just sticks to his feet, and people can just 
jump on his feet and do whatever but he'll just get like still get away with the ball so i think it's been working it's been working really well and kudos to where is duan's ball is is definitely worked tonight hopefully doesn't in the future but uh, it's it feels like arsenal 2021 where they are on to something and if they can capitalize mm-hmm. on it they'll be good in like a couple of seasons yeah dude i think couple mm-hmm. good signings uh, in the like in the summer again yeah. and you know you're talking about like different ads ball yeah. yeah um and today was like after november i think their full team started for the first time so getting mm-hmm. this result is like a good good enough you know sign that like there are good better things to come um it's a statement city lost there arsenal <laughs> lost there liverpool is yet to play there so and beating them mm. 4-0 is a is a statement especially when it comes to top 4 race so close together to each other so yeah i just hope they lose think, a few matches i think in the, in the first half i think they matched them pretty okay i think they they didn't create many, many chances mm-hmm. from spurs in the first half i think it was like zero one shot on one shot not on target and like like 0.03 xg or something like that and i think the next you know second half i think they kind of overloaded completely kulusevski you know he did he played his part so yeah i think second half is where it made all the difference that's, the first half in, that's yeah. trust me that is all who i am again we're so familiar with him <laughs> because i remember like arsenal used to come out in the second half and first half used to always be like decent and second half used to come out and concede a goal in like the first 10 minutes yeah. almost always like you just always, come out yeah. and you know you're going to concede uh, in the first yeah. 10 minutes like the team and then he would just stand there like a dumbass and like it's it's not even like pleasant to see him on the touchline yeah. but great manager <laughs> nonetheless if he gets them top 4 i mean he might still win them europa I mean, I think so he... europa or conference whenever europa... whatever they're in They didn't think in the conference. Con- conference. conference. I think they're, they're in current conference. 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 conference yeah. I think he still yeah. feels yeah. like he's at Villarreal, bro. Uh, honestly, <laughs> 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 the, the aim is to get into Europa League yeah. yeah. by yeah. winning a conference. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's go to uh, Old Trafford. Despair of Old Trafford, where there was a little bit of firecrackers and uh, two penalties. Ramsey, what are your thoughts on top four? What what are you win playing for this Dude, season? Dude, that two nil victory is just fucking wallpaper or cracks. United were fucking dog shit in that <laughs> game. Everton was Everton was Everton were the better team. Like I'm telling you, I watched that shit yeah. game and Everton were the better team. Weird stat, okay? Apparently, Sean Dyche's Everton is the is the only team in the Premier League that has underperformed by xG by so much, like over ten goals or something. ridiculous yeah. what kind of fucking stat is that yeah, yeah. and and uh, <laughs> liverpool have liverpool or tottenham have overperformed their xg like nuts yeah. right but now though, i think we we yeah. also Spurs have overperformed first did mm-hmm. spurs have overperformed their Dude, xg that stat yeah. saved united an embarrassment honestly i mean uh, tarkowski and uh, i don't know jared brantwit was so fucking Brandtwit. good uh, yeah. he was so good uh saved a couple of like he had garnacho in his pocket uh, but garnacho was still pretty influential got two penalties mm-hmm. uh, in the box yeah bruno and rashi is scoring them and that's pretty much it nothing more in the game to talk about honestly the referee didn't give one like super blatant penalty <laughs> because he's like oh okay maybe <laughs> like everton will score <laughs> you know if he, does, if he doesn't get it was such a blatant penalty he wanted to make it Did you see that? He wanted to make it fun. He just wanted to make the game fun. Yeah. He was like, "I'm getting bored here. Maybe like, some oh, competition." Like, oh, I only pointed two times and all. Like third time and all, I won't do this game. <laughs> dude, this... three. Imagine three times. No. Three nil, three yeah. times. Yeah, I mean, it, that was that was do it again. That that United had no attacking threat. Uh, that was, I mean, only Garnacho <laughs> just running at the defense was just like everyone's like, "Oh my God, what's going on?" And they tried to tackle him. Took him out. Happened to be in the box. And yeah, Pickford did some really good saves in the game. Bruno had a really good game. I think Bruno is back. Johnny Evans uh, having a fucking season at 35. I just can't. Can't fucking imagine, bro. Johnny Evans, guy we kept for selling PK. This guy's guy's back playing in that defense next to Champions League one. That was a fun. So Tenag, fun I'll, give, I'll give you We're one. We're keeping Tenag, no? I'll give you one more stat. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go. No, no, you go ahead. No, no, no. I, I, this... I have a I have a five minute segment reserved for that day, sir. Don't worry. Okay. I have to. <laughs> I have to, to I have to drink a glass of I told you so to Vamsi, but later. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Abhinav, mean, go ahead. No, 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 I was just saying. I think Sheffield United lost 20 games this season. The only mm-hmm. game in those 20 they won on XG was against United. That is bad, bro. <laughs> Dude, I, I was, I was reading, really only. I was reading something ridiculous. Okay, give them a 30-point deduction right now. <laughs> and might as well at this point. 
you can't be any worse right we still on zero goal difference ama ten hag is like ten hag is like we can't go below that absolutely love it can't go below that that's where we're at we're at fucking zero dude mm. somebody asked ten hag a common sense question in the press conference i really like this okay they're like bro if you know one left back is fucked and the other has not been available consistently throughout the season why did you sign a left back on loan and why did you send that guy back okay somebody <laughs> asked this question okay like and this yeah. was ten hag's response so he said and what did he dude, say he said <laughs> <laughs> no 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 he scratched his he scratched his ball head for a sec and this is what he said okay he said dude i believed in what my uh, you know the physio team said yeah uh, apparently they mm-hmm. promised he they promised him that he's going to have two left backs ready uh, for you know for 2024 and he's like okay cool then so he believed them and after the, all the season he's endured he's like yeah i believed them and i let this fucking guy go to regilon okay i'm seeing his instagram he's watching united play and he's like support cheering for them <laughs> and they fucking send that guy back to ben oh, for yeah man. he's injured uh, yeah injured uh, but yeah <clears throat> i i i mean fun fun yeah. fun A comedy <laughs> some comedy here yeah that's where i'm at united to fill full jokes kind of i'm just hoping <laughs> that's where you're at now nah, as, as uh, bad as united are this season i think they will win one of the matches or draw at least every in fa cup or or in the league against Liverpool I think they just have it in them to just one last shock or surprise Joe Ten Hag is uh, not going to be salary if they why. don't go to FA Cup final I'm telling you <laughs> this is not like he's not going to pay what? salary to United boys if they don't make it to FA Cup final at this point Ten Hag doesn't decide I mean, that he's just going <laughs> to Ten Hag is fighting for his own salary Ten Hag would <laughs> <laughs> Dude, dude, honestly, <laughs> dude, given bro. this Tenag season, is, Tenag is willing to work for free right now. Is that him? That right, like, Mamsi, yeah. uh, you said that you were like you had full points about how Tenag is, you know, should be the manager of United for like another season. What are your thought thoughts now? Like, I know that you've been like purely and Tenag in. Not pure. I, I told <laughs> you, like, I told you at the start of the season, right? When you get new owners in, right? the old guy mm. remaining at the club is just that fucking authoritarian manager and you know mm. this season bro i honestly i don't know what to say about ten hag like there's some decisions you know common sensical decisions that he's gotten wrong and there's some tactical mm. thing that he's gotten right in a few games given the squad he's had right and i feel like in our second season at this point united has nothing to buy into which is like sort of super weird and i don't know if that's because of the manager that's because of the staff he has or that's because of the player he has uh players he has and you know i'm super undecided on what it is right i don't see consistency in managerial decisions i don't see consistency in like recruitment decisions i don't see consistency in like player performance Mm-hmm. right like there's not like one thing to point to and say see he's got in two three decisions wrong and that's leading to consequences right and i bro this is like such a big mess for like a new one imagine like you buy something and you don't know like if the foundations at least right or not at the club like the stadium's dog shit the team's dog shit the ma- your question marks over the it's manager like, it's like i'm seeing the same movies movie again and again and again and again and again and again yeah, and Mourinho wants to it's come like in charge of this back, again <laughs> we can go back to our podcasts and we can uh, we can clip nihal vamsi and sid uh, also you know saying the same and sid also saying the same thing again and again and again and again and again, and again. I can make a whole compilation of it. Shit, I should do that, but I don't have that much time. Hours <laughs> of us saying the same shit. I wish there shit. was an AI. Yeah, yeah. I wish there was an AI tool to just like find me all that. Yeah, I mean, you you're know, muted. You know that yes. talent ID part you were saying, right? About how Liverpool and Arsenal, like, you know, their managers have this like mm. right talent ID, and the fans are like so happy, right? And mm. I was thinking, why can't United do this, right? And here's when talent ID comes into place mm-hmm. when you have something to buy into. or invest into mm-hmm. then talent id makes a huge difference right if there's mm-hmm. nothing to buy into bro there's literally like there's literally nothing to buy into talent id just doesn't matter at that point and that's where united are at, at this point and it's just boyhood uh, home grown players dragging the club across the finish line i'm talking about meno and garnacho literally just and even johnny evans mm-hmm. in that literally like boyhood Boyhood club boys 
who know what the club should be dragging the club across the finish line it's horrible to watch and you know like it's just horrible to watch i don't know what to say i think that someone said that anyone anyone who's going to who's signing for united or signing on vibes and wages that's basically it i think it's not yeah because there's nothing to buy into right and i think it best club in the world Biggest club in the world vibes. <laughs> Biggest and all, I don't know. Um, Apparently, second most valuable. I don't know uh, who the fuck is valuing this shit. Yeah, yeah, that value is every day going yeah. down, and city is every day going up. Yeah, yeah. We gave ten minutes to Vamsi, and he just ranted fully. Like his, I hope it's out of your system now. Dude, my dad, my dad asked <laughs> me when I, after he watched the derby with me, and then he watched the Everton game with me, and he looked at me and he's like, "Why do you do this to yourself?" He's like, "You can go out, right? Like, do anything. Why are you doing this to yourself?" <laughs> I didn't know what Hilarious. to say to him. Oh my god! Um, vibes and no wages. <laughs> vibes and no. Uh, what do you guys? Uh, I think we're done with the content. So, do you want yeah. to do hot takes for a quick minute? Do you want to quickly do FA Cup and Porto? Yeah. Five five minutes. Yeah. Porto. I don't know. Sure. Sure. CL. Go ahead. I mean, you go. Ahead. Um, so, so okay. Arsenal coming up with a clutch match. We've never mm. gone past quarterfinals for 14 years now. Mm. We lost the uh, away leg 1-0, and it was a very poor performance. Mm. Given mm. how we have been, what do you guys think? Uh, can Arsenal do it at Emirates? Can we overturn and face Real Madrid in neutral. the quarterfinals? Go ahead. Abhinav, what do you think? I think they should do it. I mean, there is no reason why Arsenal cannot do it, especially given the recent form and everything. I mean, Porto. What when was the last match? It was three weeks ago. Uh, yeah, the weeks Champions ago. League match against three weeks ago, and again they've been they've been exceptional since since that match, right? And I think it's just a mentality thing. I mean, the performance wise, they are like a notch above Porto. And if they don't do it, and again, it's just has to come back to that European whatever you know thing for with phobia that Arsenal has. You know, they're not used to in the last I don't know three, four, five, or ten seasons, whatever it is. So you can use the yeah, B word. You won't feel bad. <laughs> you know, start okay. start of the season. No, so uh, I, me and Nihal asked Nirav, "Are you gonna take a Champions League semi final mm-hmm. over a title title win?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'll fucking take mm-hmm. it." <laughs> so no, I won't. <laughs> he said, "I'll fucking I won't. take it." I remember <laughs> this. Of course you. Of course yeah, you won't. No, I won't. I won't. I won't. Yeah. yeah, I won't. Uh, yeah, but yeah, but the thing is, yeah, they should is, win it. Mm-hmm. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I honestly feel like it's going to be really tough and I actually I want obviously us to win go ahead but I think like if I have to do a prediction if I have to put a lot of my money I think Arsenal go out on Wednesday Porto like even after the game they've been in really good form they beat Benfica like 5-0 which is like <laughs> ridiculous yeah. wow. for like something of like a, you know like top top to uh, Portuguese teams yeah. and they just know how to you know sit back you know be patient and they they have like all these players who can make it really dirty and yeah. emirates is a really anxious uh, place dude uh i feel like just the anxiety is going to get to us mm. but yeah. i hope not i hope we blow them away but this, this is what i honestly am feeling i'm also reverse jinxing the whole situation yeah agreed i think <laughs> martinelli is going to be a big miss yeah yeah and i think benfica drew in europa league as well i mean they're not like Doing very good as as a club as such, but they drew mm. two Rangers or something. So again, it's it's Porto again. If you just compare teams, Arsenal should go through. I want Arsenal to go through really because you guys again, you guys are the one of the two or three Dude, teams who not, can beat City over two just, legs. Honestly, it's not just Porto. Uh, like we losing against Porto, but just how Porto played that game. We had mm. nothing. We had nothing in that game, zero, and but, that's the only game in this season where I've seen we us have like absolutely nothing. Fulham mm-hmm. probably was a really bad game for us, yeah. but again, there was something there. Here, there was nothing. It was like full stop. Yeah, dude, I I agree with yeah. Niram. Still, no, I want Arsenal to go through so that your fixture list is packed, so that you can draw against City. Everybody do whatever you need needs to be done. <laughs> As a I same, honestly that's feel the only like, reason. I am a full believer in the fact that if you have if you have a game every three days, you're going to perform at the highest level. I think it's going to be like the best, and I think Klopp has also proved that. Every three, Pep has also proved that top two teams are City and Liverpool for the five years, and they have all been competing for four competitions. Kya ukhar liya, dude? Logon ne without uh, dude, okay. uh, just I'll, having I'll Premier League prior deal mm-hmm. up until they lost either of the two competitions. So mm-hmm. I think that's the only thing. But I see where you're coming from. Like overarchingly, we're talking about yeah. like elite level here. 
so hmm. there's always like you know elitist of the elite which is yeah uh we need to be to beat city i don't think we are there yet. also i think if you yeah you're right as if you go out of the champions league the pressure especially for this arsenal team the pressure of just having the premier league to make it a successful season we can't take it that is we too can't much take it. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. i wish we were in the fa cup but uh, i think just having champions league is going to be a little less going out in the semi finals and all is okay i i, I don't mind yeah. Why we need to get yeah. to at least semi-finals, and I'll be more confident about the league if we get to the semi-finals. Yeah, we Which need is to going go to be a big to... achievement for Arsenal, dude. Yeah, like we, we have, need to. We, we need to go out to a big it. team. Basically, we need to go out to a big team. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Not get run over by a big team if we are going out. We can't go out to a Porto. Like it'll just haunt me for again for another season if we go out to Porto. It won't. Let's be honest. It won't. No, no, it, it won't. won't. We've it like won't. it's, it's basically it won't won't because we've always gone. It no, won't but it's haunt you. Like, like, that's what I'm saying. It's repeat. It's history yeah. repeating itself. So. And you know, you know, what are we gonna say? Are we gonna say we are bigger fish to fry and just move on? And <laughs> all, that's all. We all know. We all know. We fucked up. So <laughs> we fucked up. That fish is also gonna go. No, but I think if you, if you lose up. to Porto, yeah. right? No, but if you lose to Porto, I think right now, I mean, like two hours ago, Arsenal were third. Like you didn't have much to lose, to be honest. Like not third, like in mid first, but right now, given everything, you know, the, the number of games played and all that, so I think you have everything to lose if. If you lose to Porto, league is everything that you play for, and you're at the top, and you cannot even just kind of blink for a second. I yeah. think that can play into you know Liverpool and City's hand, but you know I don't know. I, I just wish Arsenal, you know, gets through this and then draw City or Real Madrid or something, and then it. That, I, I was just looking at the games. I think those games are sandwiched between for Arsenal. I think they made, made a sheet or something. The second leg quarterfinals are between Aston Villa, Brighton. Quarter final, so national villa, and quarter final. Exactly. I mean, I, I did everything so that at least I, I know when these things are going on. So, but yeah. I hope you face Leverkusen next, man, and they, they throw you out of your Europa League. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Yeah, he's the next manager anyway. It's fine. <laughs> cool. I don't think we need to do FA Cup. I think we'll just go. Let's do quick, picks. quick predictions. I think that's all. Maybe for quick one. Predicts for FA Cup. Yeah. Yeah, Mamsi, go ahead, bro. FA Cup pred- predictions. <laughs> Uh, Liverpool versus Man United. Why are you doing this to me, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Have some faith in your club, oh, bro. Come on. Please, predictions bro. and like predictions and quickly why you think that will be the score. Uh, I you know I'm I'm gonna be positive and I'm gonna say it to one United. Uh, this is something that they have to play for, dude. Like this is the only cup they have left. If we can get Hoyland back fit, you know, I, 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 the first half is encouraging against like what I saw for City. Uh, I know, I, I think we have sort of an idea about the kind of squad, you know, you know, sorry, Klopp is gonna put through with that squad, and you know, don't, don't forget, United drew nil all like in that Liverpool game, in the previous mm-hmm. fixture. So you know, there is a chance. It's not like you can't. <laughs> Nothing. Some discipline hasn't like you know, so you know, cracked the game. So there is a chance for United, and you know they should be able to capitalize. They should be able to score at least two goals to win that game, and I think it will come down to converting those chances and like having that discipline to you know restrict Liverpool, which they've shown they can do. But I don't know again in a cup game, Liverpool. It's a it's yeah. a neutral venue. But I think that's why I feel like there's a little bit of chance. <laughs> What's it's a neutral, neutral venue? venue. It's, it's at your home. Oh, it's at it's OT, a, huh? No, it's no, no, it's a, a quarterfinal. Okay. I mean, yeah. Nah, do is that against it's you? It's a OT, bro. It's a OT. Oh god, yeah, pressure then. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's better. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> that's bad. That's bad. He's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, not the theater of dump again. Bump is like no, another one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Theater of despair. Theater of broken yeah. roof, bro. Currently. All right, Abhinav, your your predictions and thoughts. Yeah, I think uh, given how we play, I was kind of a bit skeptical till today uh, with respect to like how with angsters and everything. But given that Salah's cup, Salah's back and all that, I think we should win two nil easily. I don't, you know, especially cup final the way we play. Yeah, two nil, and I think. Uh, Van Dyke should you know Van Dyke was it who's the other guy? Conrad should be back for that match as well. So I'm thinking two nil. I think it's going to be uh, a two one to United. Hmm. I think Liverpool Liverpool's play will play into mm-hmm. United's attitude and just the overall setup that they have, especially against City. Like City tends to hold a lot of the ball, and if you play a low block, low mid block against City, it becomes tough to resist because of the finishes that they have. Liverpool are more of like a chaotic team and a runner running in behind kind of a team. So 
if Rashford, I felt he was sick against sick as in like actually unhealthy against City. <laughs> if he's if he's if he's back to his full fitness, uh, and they can run a bit at the other players, I think, uh, yeah, I think they can be get at, especially at Old Rashford. I mean, if not now, then when, dude? Like just sack Ten Hag if not now. Mm-hmm. Then no. Because Isn't I think Ten Hag. Uh, is no. there a quarter final? Is there is no replay. No, I think it's just uh, uh, extra oh, time. Yeah. Uh, they played two yeah. year replays think, for uh, four ones, but they won't play for like. <laughs> what is this, bro? <laughs> now you want to go to Anfield? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just makes no sense <laughs> think... that format. Like, he wants to have some more seven up. That's all he wants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I, I think Ten Hag knows how to. I think Ten Hag is uh, is capable of, you know, grinding out a nil nil at Old Trafford. Basically, just like deading the whole, dulling the whole situation and like. Uh, but I think Liverpool is going to win either in extra time, they squeeze in a goal or penalties. I don't think United's going to win this at all. I had two yeah. for two. Preds. So. Yo, tell, see. tell me that... Let's go, uh, boy. Please turn up. Please show up. Please show up. <laughs> Nihal or Sid will sub in for this trauma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nilo, what is that cup oh, of yeah. I said so? That is half full for you. Kai Havertz. I mean, Kai it's Havertz? okay, bro. Let you know? it go. Yeah. No, it's Eric Ten Hag. Oh, it's Eric Ten Hag. There's nothing to buy in. Eric Ten Hag. Yeah. Eric Ten Hag, you guys are very strong for for like this this year i think everyone's broken there dude i don't even yeah. feel like talking dude about i'll tell it. you why though like super because, simple yeah, reason I mean, it's a stage mm-hmm. topic, super simple reason we need to know who yeah, not to Bumsi, keep also tell me on tell me on whatsapp bro <laughs> on the side <laughs> write a whole paragraph <laughs> is you want to rap or do you want to do quickly hot take okay let's you do try it, it? Yeah, that's okay right. we have like this we're going to debut a new segment probably like take 10 minutes it's called hot mm-hmm. takes we're going to go around like the the football media world find quotes that people have said and probably talk about like the your views on those quotes uh the one hot take that we have for today is trent alexandra trent said recently that looking back on this era although they won more titles than us they being man city um and have probably been more successful our trophies will mean more to us and our fan bases because of the uh, situations of both clubs financially how both clubs have built their teams and the manner in which they we've done it it probably means more to us so i want to know is he crying or does he actually have a point i'm not going to go to uh, I'm, okay let's go to avinash first i'll take my liverpool blackers aside and i'll say mm-hmm. that quote was not really needed to be very honest with you like yeah i mean it's basically just a kind of poke and then before the big match or something and then just mm. get some reaction sort of but he's mm. not entirely wrong i mean i think he's he's hinting at all the uefa charges and what city is facing and how we build the team and all that but i also understand that a club of liverpool stature like i don't know you have like a 800 million squad or something and then you have this investment bank and spanking you you can't keep crying foul and say that okay we are we are we are a so poor team or whatever no yeah you have you are what you are a no city or city are doing city are doing everything very i don't know corrupt or at least you know not they're not following the rules i get we get all of that but just don't kind of keep saying that liverpool are so bad as well they're doing everything right and we are not at the level of city because we are so yes the court i can understand why he said it just to kind of evoke some reaction but again at the same time um, I don't know. I mean, it is what it is. I guess we, we, we can't well, keep crying all, all the time. <laughs> Can we change the hot take? I expected a better reaction. I thought you'll be like a trained fanboy here, but <laughs> I was just being reasonable. No, like that's this, fine. But you'll yeah, be, yeah, you'll be. You know, that's mm-hmm. you're right. You're right. I actually truly believe mm-hmm. that. Agent, you have different views or similar views? I mean, similar views, but different take. I feel like with city when it comes to city, right? You can't really fault a fan for, or you can't really call out a fan. of any team or or any club in the world and be like our fans or our trophy or our trophies means more to our fans than their trophies means to their fans because it's at the end of it it's that's what fandom is like you know you go crazy you yeah. battle with like commoners and you do all of those things so bringing fans in is kind of petty and secondly that's one point the second thing is like we all know what city is right there always be an at- yeah. asterisk against their all their titles so mm-hmm. when players especially players who are you know who are good players who are in position of power whose words actually mean something when they come out and say it that asterisk kind of gets diluted a little bit like these are the things that they don't need to be said 
like everybody knows it it will exactly. always be the center of the conversation so i just feel like it was again to your point it was one of those things that wanted uh, some reaction out of city maybe liverpool maybe like rile up the fans to show up at anfield but yeah there were so many other ways to do it like just say i pocket it somebody yeah. like people will be right off like you know go, go on the first yeah. whatever level like go bring that ruthlessness back to football you don't have to be nice yeah. and hide bit behind financial paywalls just be like yeah i fucking like prove myself in front of that guy i'm willing to face him again and like you know bring that side of fiery sports back into uh, exactly right Not i mean like to your point nice yeah he fucking scored against city earlier in yeah. the season right i think he can talk he about did. that he can talk about yeah. all the times he could he yeah. played well against city but i think he is talking about things that he i don't know probably wouldn't fully understand i guess and i think it's just something i think is, i think he's seen yeah. the memes of uh, city fans and liverpool fans kissing each other's ass those kind of memes so he's like i'm going to change this <laughs> I need to change this behavior right now. Even after full time today, you can see how Haaland and Van Dijk were hugging each other. They're all smiling and everything. I'm like, like this is a very friend. I mean, De Bruyne's kids and Van Dijk's kids go to the same school. They kind of hang out all all the time. You remember that yeah. uh, Ramsdale incident that happened at Tottenham, where like a fan threw a. You basically need that, right? Of enough, yeah. <laughs> something like that. Arteta is running, yeah. taking him away. I think an LDA is crazy like that. Um, all right. For once, he have. Hot take number two. Hot take number two comes from uh, Rio Ferdinand. Rio Ferdinand said, sensationally claimed that basically, if if Eric Ten Hag leaves United or go, or he said goes to buy or buy and poach him, which is another delusional thing, um, <laughs> and United go in for Mikel Arteta, Mikel Arteta would leave Arsenal instantly. He would go to the go to the players, say that it's been emotional, and uh, I'm I'm gonna head. <laughs> Right. So he said that like, with, with chest. Um, thoughts on that, Bumsi? Yeah, I don't know what. Like truly, Bumsi... like he believes that. Like uh, he truly believes that United are big enough for like a manager no, it's to possible. come it's in. It's happened before. Bigger players than Arteta have moved. You know, they've come, won the league. You've seen this shit happen with RVP before. <laughs> it's happened before, right? Like big names moving. You don't know what the situation. But that's like that was only when like you were good. That's not happening. I mean, happened. they didn't win the league that season, also. That's... And RVP went and went. Uh, but did Ferguson was there? I mean, that was the that was not the banter Dude, era. I mean, that was I a mean, good era. Think about it, right? The scale of project that Arteta is in is in charge of now, right? Will hmm. would have probably prepped him for the scale of job that's at United right now, and they need the capacity of a manager who's who's done a job like that, and maybe Arteta should be on that, hmm. you know, sanely. Whether he'll come, he'll not come, okay. right? That's no, a different okay, story. No, But you know, if there is a list, maybe he should be on that, right? And things happen, okay. bro. Worst things have happened, you know. Oh, so it'll be a worst you thing. You know, we talked about. Thing. We talked about Arsenal. We talked about Arteta having a savior complex. I get that, but he's not going to save an entire club. He's not going to go to United <laughs> and do that. So it, it's it's delusional, man. I don't know. I think Rio Ferdinand and everything he does, not just this comment, this sort of thing. I mean, I'm not just, saying I agree with the reaction. I think with yeah, the... I mean, it's a shit mm-hmm. comment to make. Yeah, again, it's one of those uh, things about like it. It's it sounds like he's fucking jealous of what Arteta is doing at Arsenal, right? And I, I personally don't feel that way. I mean, Arteta is doing fucking the. <laughs> the way that you know the challenges that he had to face right to get to where they are where arsenal is now it's no fucking joke and no small feat to do that but i but you you still think that like this is a step up like as the job perspective or whatever course. this is the scale is bigger yeah definitely a bigger and this is scale. just a step yeah, up i think so too it bigger yeah, scale i mean and the rewards Dude, are bigger, I mean, is yeah, what you're saying because see, he he would go to barcelona in a heartbeat like if they truly wanted him right and and hmm. you, you know united is that so. league of like real madrid barcelona maybe they, they don't play that kind of football anymore but you know it doesn't dispute the fact that you know people still consider it to be in the league right and maybe which year are you living in <laughs> bro <laughs> again if he can go to barcelona so, I mean... if he can go to madrid you know united's a job that he'll take and I don't know, man. This Maybe is, we'll get a what... better manager than Arteta. You know, Maybe they... no, no, if Arteta no, doesn't win this year, Maybe you know. Maybe the boys want to sack him. Who knows? If not now, then when are you going to fucking win it? Okay. Eight years more, right? Like, no, bro. We are right. happy. <laughs> we're happy coming second. But uh, but uh, like, easy word. But... Reply to this. No, 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 no. no. I'm I'm on mute. This this doesn't need replying. This is this is whatever. This is basically uh, the inferiority complex of a club who was who were and have been. 
are nowhere near anywhere in the picture and they just want to be significant and that's why they come up with it but i think it and this is not not pump this is not you this is more rio ferdinand okay and this is this is his comments come from a very i i strongly personally believe that our era at 42 43 whatever he is he's achieved so much more despite being a lesser player than a lot of united liverpool english players who have tried tested and failed miserably and like gary neville did that paul scholes did that roy keane did that Rio Ferdinand probably hasn't, but then he doesn't have the balls to anyway do it. Gerard did it, Lampard did it. All of these players, arguably better than Arteta, had much you know extravagant careers, and Arteta basically brought a club which all of them hated because obviously like it's a mutual feeling. Like all of the Arsenal pl- players and fans hate United and vice versa because we lived through that heated rivalry. And this guy doing something that basically they want all their pals to do like they want Gerrard to succeed at Liverpool they want Lampard to succeed at Chelsea but they want Wayne Rooney to do the same at wherever he he goes at but none of them are able to and Arteta is doing it at a much larger scale in his first job competing with Guardiola and Klopp barely anybody could do that only Klopp was was able to compete with Guardiola and then Conte and and probably another manager Mourinho who won leagues over over Pep so Like he's in a latest of the elite categories right now in terms of just coaching the team maybe he's not won it and maybe it will never come i mean who still who see in the future but this this definitely stems from a very deep insecurity about you know firstly not wanting us to do well and secondly somebody achieving more than they could in the english premier league where which is the league that they cover the most and also thirdly it's a great underhand comment a compliment where you can't really go ahead and praise someone So you praise him in an underhand way, wherein like you know you're jealous of them. So I think that's that's where. No, it comes yeah, literally, from I agree songs. with him on that. It sounds like a jealous fucking statement to make. Right? Like, who goes on fucking media and says this shit? He has a podcast. Know, I, 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 he can say whatever. Like you were saying, whatever you fucking want, right? He can also say whatever he wants. Dude, I mean, I mean, yeah. all. I think that part. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, I was just saying. I think that podcast is with that guy, right? Stephen Housen or something. I think mm. he is one of the most cartoon characters I've seen in him. Again, it is there are he, it's he all also about hates. yeah he hates Arsenal exactly, yeah. and I think most of it is doesn't come from a point of reason or anything. It's just about like trying to kind of get those remarks and then hate and all of that. I think that that's in that podcast is when he made that comment. In ever since he he kind of joined you know that podcast with with Stephen House, and I think even they had Mourinho on there or something like that. But I think all of these statements are just like to kind of get those clicks and reactions, not. things from a place of reason or you know at least to you know trying to understand where you know they'll go it's it's all very you know basic yeah good uh, answers all all round and i think now we can wrap up the the podcast and this was game week 28 review next week is like almost all games are postponed we have fa cup and then we'll be back for game week 9 review so peace out